All right, let's make the magic happen with an app that's going to play a trivia game with questions and answers downloaded from the internet. So let's just get going with a demo. That's a nice way to find out how the uh, application actually works. Okay, and here we go. So we have a simple layout, three questions, um, all vaguely science related. A person gets sunburned on a cloudy day. Uh, we'll say true. Oh my gosh, we got that right. The background is green. Uh, uh, I don't even want to try to pronounce that. It's the deadliest plane. I'll say false. Oh, well, okay, that's true. And uh, this thing is a disease known as silicosis. I think that's true, but we'll say false. Okay, and then that's red. Okay, and we want to get uh, some new ones, so we pull this down. We get um, a refresh. And in this case, we, we got the, the same question for number one. Um, there are ways to avoid that using the service, but they're too fancy, so uh, we don't bother. We can get random questions, including repeats. Here, I'll just pull it down again. All right, there we go. Neanderthals were a direct ancestor. Uh, I don't know, maybe, I mean, in my day, they were direct. Yeah, I guess they're no longer direct. And, uh, you know, we're not being, we're not keeping score. Um, we're just sort of letting you click whatever. And then um, it's, it's colored red or green. And then the way to get rid of it is to pull down and that cleans and it uh, actually goes across the network and fetches the new questions. So that's, that's really it. That's the dynamics of the game. Um, and you'll have to implement, you know, these, these buttons and stuff, which hopefully the, the, the button dynamics should be pretty straightforward. Actually getting the questions from the internet is not. Okay. So instead of looking at the code, let's look at a web browser and let's look at this trivia game, which I just found online. Trivia API. It's uh, completely free JSON API. That's cool. And it's actually got this sort of, um, oh, complicated um, spinner set of spinners. Um, th let's, j let's just click API documentation because, you know, oh, I think, yeah, this will, we can go even up here and just say, oh, this is uh, open trivia base, my ghostery. Um, Okay, that's awesome. Let's look at the API because you know we're we're big network API programmers now. API documentation. Uh, get started. Oh, okay. Uh, tells me to do this to get started. So I'll do a new uh, tab and I'll uh, grab that. And gosh, that looks like JSON. That's cool. Um, it's hard to tell what the heck this whole thing means. So we will go in here, a little R JSON pretty printer, um, cut and paste, and start collapsing stuff and say, oh, okay. So what came back is an object with a response code, with a response code of zero and some results. Um, and the results are a list and the list is a list of objects and in each object we have things like category and so this is the json key and in our code we're going to have to map the json key to a kotlin data structure because that's what retrofit and the json library are going to do is they are going to uh, retrofit is going to make the network request and json is going to grab this json and turn it into a Kotlin object for us. And in order to do that, we need to map between these key names and uh, names in a, a class. And they can be the same. You can say category maps to category and type maps to type. You know, um, JSON tends to use snake case. That's all lowercase separated by underscores. And Kotlin likes uh, camel case. So we would probably map this to, you know, correct 
and then capital answer. You know, but even even that you can use snake case and Colin and it will just um, uh, give you a squiggly underline. Okay, so um, uh, in this case, we, we seem to have gotten a bunch of questions. And the questions are multiple choice questions, and there's a correct answer, or, or maybe there's multiple, it's just multiple answers. Well, no, it is multiple choice. There's a correct choice and some incorrect choices. Okay, so now we, we, we sort of see, and if we actually take a look at the uh, URL that they asked, uh, that they gave us, oh, it's just that mat, mat equals 10. Okay, so that's that's cool. Let's go back here. So now, you know, we've got a sense of this API docu documentation. There's more and there's stuff about, you know, signing up for user tokens and stuff. And that's how you avoid some of these repeats. But I'm tired of reading. So let's just get in here and do some stuff. So um, number of questions, you know, three of three, we have three questions in our um API, so we're going to ask for three questions, and let's just say science and nature. I mean, I could have asked for science computers, but I'd probably be depressed at what they were asking. It's going to be like all about AI models or something. Uh, we'll we'll call it medium difficulty. You know, again, these are these are actual. Well, we'll we'll show these. These are going to end up being per, basically parameters to the URL. And that's something that we can make as parameters in our program, although that's a little fancier than we're going to get to in this flipped classroom. And then uh, select type, we're actually just going to do true false because that's, you know, easier logic. And then for encoding, this is uh, a lot of times they're, they're these strings you think of as simple, but, you know, they come in these different encoding types. I mean, base64 is, is not human readable. We're going to use the default encoding, and even the default encoding uses some somewhat unpleasant HTML characters that we're going to have to translate out. And then they have this nice button, Generate API URL. Oh, why, why thank you. So let's take a look at this. Um, I'll copy that and paste it into a new tab. And uh, look at that. We get back this... Um, JSON and this JSON now looks pretty manageable. So we'll go in here and you know cut and paste it in. And now we've got our three questions. The three questions are the um, same category, and it's just true or false. And so you know, do we really need this list of incorrect answers? Hint, hint, hint we don't. Um, probably do need the correct answer. We need the question. That's really it. We already know what the difficulty is and the type and stuff. It's going to return that to us, but we don't actually need to use that information. And let's take a, a look at this, um, or let's go over here and take a look at this. So this is a URL. It's uh, HTTPS is the what they call the the transport. Um, it's HTTP or HTTPS uh, for for for. Uh, the web and the HTTP protocol. You know, you could use FTP or other things. This is the, I think they call it the authority, but it's the web service name. It sort of used to be the name of a web, of a web server machine, but now it's much more abstract than that. Uh, although there's probably only one machine that is serving opentdb.com. And then there's a slash and then uh, api.php, which is a script that gets run when we load this URL. We we're going to do a get on this URL. And then these are URL, uh, this question mark, are URL uh, parameters. So amount equals three. That's the number of questions we're asking for. Category equals 17. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, oh, well, it, it, it reset it, but... Our category was science and nature or something. That's category 17. That's how they encode it. Difficulty equals medium. Type equals Boolean. So these are all potentially things we can control from our program. And we can tell Retrofit that this is a 
uh, that type is the name of a parameter and we want to fill that parameter in at runtime. But for the, the sake of this flip classroom, this is good. So you're going to have to figure out exactly how to uh, express this URL in the code in, in the API object interface. It's well, sorry, it's not an object, it's an interface. Um, but that shouldn't be too difficult. And you've uh, been given the catnet example. All right, I think that is all I am going to say because the rest you should be able to handle from the write up. Um, I mean, I will say that um, giving you this uh, main activity uh, with a support fragment manager and all this stuff is just sort of correct and the, the layout you, you don't have to bother with in this flip classroom. I know you've been doing a lot of layout, which I, I think is good practice, but we will get in this one just to um, the API section, you know, this section with the repository and the API and the trivia question. And I've given you a lot of this framework and then you need some practice with the view model and the, the fragment. And so that's, that stuff is, is, uh, I mostly haven't given you. Okay. Thanks very much. Good luck.